and welcome to another one of Rock Fresh Presents. As you notice, I'm not Matt. Matt's basically off at Star and Garter doing something noisy and call like. So you've got me as your substitute interviewer today. And I'm with Andreas, lead singer of Dark Funeral. Bloody black metal overlords, black metal sort of legends, formation. You know, you created this fucking thing. You know, welcome to Manchester. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. So, you know, loads of stuff to talk to you about. Um, let's start with the album. We Are The Pockets came out last year. Yeah. Six years in the gestation, about six years from the last album. Mm, something like that. Was that intentional or did that bloody COVID thing get in the way? Uh, no, I think actually the bloody COVID thing uh, <laughs> made it go faster. All right. Yeah, because we've been touring a lot since, yeah. the, since the last album. Yeah. We've been out, there's always been something going on. And when COVID came, we didn't have anything else to do than just, okay, let's shift focus to this because we realized we will not have any shows for at least a year, you know, it ended up with two years, but we didn't know that. Uh, and also we, we just started focusing on the album and putting all our energy there. And I don't know, without COVID, maybe it would have been later. And that, that was almost one of the other things I was going to talk about, because you always have quite large gaps between mm. albums, you know, sort of the, yeah, there was the one before that was, you know, sort of, was about eight, about eight years or seven or eight years. Mm. So, is, that, is that a choice thing or is that sort of just the way that you work as a band? Well, I think it's a bit of both. Uh, some, sometimes it's like if you shit out two albums too, too uh, close to each other, they're going to sound the same and the second one is going to be a bit less good. Uh, you know, it's going to be... So I think it's, it's, you need to let it take, things take the time. If it takes two years, it takes two years. If it takes six years, well, let it take six years, you know? So I think forcing, forcing a creative process is the complete wrong way to go. And, We've been lucky with the album, uh, with the, our label not being mm -hmm. blow touches in our asses and mm -hmm. stuff like that either. So, because they know we're gonna deliver, and it's it's gonna be done when it's done. No rushed products, you know. Is that also you mentioned about touring and gigs? You know, we we all read stories about the whole shift in the way that music works now, and it's no longer about records because we've all stopped buying records, and you know we just use all these Spotify's. Is there much more a, a view that you make your money out of the touring? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I, there's, there's not much to say about yeah, it. You yeah. look at sales numbers, yeah. and you, even you can have a, an album that sells in like '90s standard. Mm. Like shit, mm. it's a top list now yeah. because there's no, it's no competition. Yeah. You know, yeah. even the big pop artists are selling more online. Mm. You know, so. Yeah. And that was one of the other things I was going to because it's a really interesting bill here tonight. So, you know, yeah. for, for the audience, we're in the bowels of the Academy here, mm -hmm. Dark Funeral up, sort of co-headlining with Cannibal Corpse. And it's really quite interesting because you've got, you know, Cannibal Corpse, Godfathers of, you know, death metal, mm -hmm. and yourselves, you know, Godfathers of, you know, black metal. It's a really interesting thing because there's always this view that, you know, black metal and death metal are a bit like Bert and Ernie and don't get on and stuff, but actually it's quite interesting sort of bedfellows. I think it's a you journalist that make, yeah. makes this interesting. Happen. I mean, but, of course that is. but the thing is that the first time Dark Funeral and the Cannibal Corpse mm. toured together mm. was in 1998. Yeah. This is not a new thing, yeah. you know? But people seem to believe that it's like, wow, this new mm. invention mm. about crossover yeah. tours, you know? It's like, what's the point of having two bands sounding exactly mm. the same on the same bill? Uh, yeah. For me, that, yeah. that doesn't make any sense, yeah. you know? Yeah, for the hardcore ones that love those mm. two bands, but I mean, I, I never heard about Inge Ingested before mm. this tour. I fucking love those guys. Mm. Yeah. You know, like the hometown boys here from Manchester. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that, that's something that I would never have discovered mm. otherwise. Uh, and also Storm Ruler, the mm. guys from the yeah. States, they're doing something really cool as well. So, I mean, there's something to discover as well. And yeah. what better way than watching mm. the one band that you really like, and then you get three others mm. that are actually very, very good too. You know. And I think that was, you know, was on the way in of watching the sort of the snake of people come in. It was a really yeah. interesting mix of, yeah. you know, Cannibal Corpse t-shirts and then loads of geezers in corpse fights. Yeah. You know, and, and especially what's really interesting about the geezers and corpse fights is they're, they're all probably young enough to be my grandkids. You know, mm -hmm. so there's mm -hmm. this, you know, do you look out there, and, you know, and say, my God, they're getting younger. They are. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's really cool to see mm -hmm. the regrowth, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think when we played in uh, up in Scotland now in uh, Glasgow, mm -hmm. yeah. I saw this guy and I was, uh, I don't know, past his 60s mm -hmm. stage, you know, like crowd surfing. Mm -hmm. And then comes a kid, you know? Mm. So it's like all ages. It's, 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 it's really cool. And that's what I think that's one of the great things about metal. That's, that was almost the nice thing about hearing you talk about 
ingested and Stormbringer because you sometimes get this idea that right, when you get to the level that you are, you almost stop listening to stuff. I mean, obviously, you know, you're still absolutely in love with this music. Well, the thing is that honestly, I don't listen to much music at yeah. all when I'm on yeah. tour. Uh, we are four bands playing every night. Yeah. Most of the times, so you're stuck in the backstage mm. listening to three yeah. other bands. <laughs> Uh, so when I go back to yeah. my bank, I put something soft, you know, yeah. some country music yeah. or I don't know, some soft <laughs> piano yeah. or Björk, whatever, you know. Yeah. Uh, but of course, when you listen to these bands all the time, you get like, of course, you, and then you go check them out on stage a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is how I discover music, mm -hmm. I guess, I'm touring with them. Yeah. And, you know, going back to the album, you know, the album has been a huge success, you know, sort of really, you know, big, especially in Germany and really, you know, German charts and Swedish charts and Norwegian charts, you know, we're a bit behind here in the UK, but, you know, but, you know is there a point where, do you, do you start taking it for granted or is it still really exciting when you get those chart positions? No, there's nothing to take for granted. I mean, we have to do what we do best and we can't think about that when we write music, yeah. you know? So everything that comes is a, is a huge bonus. Yeah. For us, the, the biggest pleasure is to get it out there yeah. in the end. And seeing the, the, the fans actually getting to dive into it, you know, answering interviews and, you know, that, that's, the, that's the reward we're getting. And then also, of course, getting out on the road. And do you find, you know, I must admit, I've, I've not looked at the set list, you know, it's very easy nowadays to find the set list and oh, stuff, yeah. and, but I, I've tried desperately because I'm, you know, I'm an old school fan, so yeah. I'm really interested where you go. Do you, know, do you find the, the new material goes down as well as the old stuff, you know, so do you, which you know, the, the success of the album has been phenomenal, you know, do you find that, you know, when you're sitting there screeching along the new stuff, is actually being reacted to as much as the old stuff? I think so, I think so, and as you see this uh, younger generation out there, they're meeting us with We Are The Apocalypse or yeah. uh, Where Shall It Rain, yeah. for example. That's the, the album, their entry yeah. album, and then they go back, you know? So, uh, I mean, the, the set that we're doing now is uh, with heavy emphasis on the last two albums. Yeah. With some golden necks yeah. in there, of course. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, yeah. which I'm very much looking forward to. Yeah, that. and it's, it's, it's not so hard to, to make a set list these days. Yeah. Because it's not about what we include, it's what we have to exclude, you know? Well, I was, I was getting, one of the things I was going to also mention is the fact that you've know, you got such a vast, you know, mm. you know, you know, sort of basically sort of set of, you know, smorgasbord of stuff to deal yeah. with and stuff. Yeah. You know, do you, I, I notice, you know, not giving anything away, you know, sort of, you know you're probably doing the same set you know, every night. Are you ever tempted to go, well, let's, let's put in an old one just to see what oh, happens? Oh, we have, we have uh, actually been circulating. Oh, you circulated? Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. In the first part of the show, we circulate. Brilliant. Usually it's the second song. We, yeah. never, we never know what to play until we're up. Okay, which one are we doing tonight? Yeah, let's do this one. And is that, you know, almost literally while you're on stage, you'll go, what, what, do, you fancy? what do you fancy, guys? Uh, not really that. We have to decide before yeah. because yeah. of the click tracks yeah. for the drummer yeah. and such and such. Yeah. But, but yeah, we've been doing a lot of different songs. Mm. Uh, as as the, on the, the yeah. second song has been a bit different throughout the throughout the tour. Yeah. I think we have circulated five or six songs, and that's a lot. I think the thing I find most magnificent about Springsteen is my big love. You know, he picks up you know a card and shows it back. Hey, what we're doing? Cadillac Ranch. You know, everybody. Ah, you know, yeah. I, I I love the way the band you know have to know a hundred songs yeah. just in case he's. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're not really there, but <laughs> we can circulate the songs a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we're going. In a couple of days, this tour ends, yeah. and we're going straight to the US, basically. Yeah. And then there we're doing a headline set, yeah. which is longer. Yeah. So we have to have extra songs for that too. So we've been circulating a couple of songs, yeah. feeling what fits into this set and how we can expand it, expand it. And yeah. so no, it's, it's fun, and also it's it's a bit fun when you're doing a song. I haven't done this in a while. Yeah. You know, it's like I have to be on my toes. You know. Yeah. And I, I can see that like, I do, you know, sometimes worry about bands who do the whole, the same set for, you know, six months and you think, my mm. God, you must get bored, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it becomes routine. Yeah. Of course, it becomes complete routine. I think the other thing to mention, you know, it, it's, it must admit, for me, it's quite weird to see you here in Sydney. So I'm so used to you in the, ah, yeah. the get up and yeah. stuff. And I, just sort of, you know, I know this is a really, really dumb question, but how long does it take you to get all the stuff, you know, after you say, how long does it take to go with the gear on and stuff? Well, for me, usually 40 minutes. Yeah. From from uh, start to finish. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Something like that. And you know, and, and the last time we were here in the UK was Bloodstock, which yeah. was bloody hot. And you know, I, I sat there myself, melting in there, yeah. watching you lot on stage, going, "Fucking hell, you're probably boiling in those suits." Oh yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, when you go to the sun, you drink some water, you don't pour it in your mouth. Yeah. It's like, yeah, in there, yeah. <laughs> Like, shh, like a song. Yeah. No, I, I definitely, you know, well, these, these, are, these are guys that are basically, uh, frankly, cooking for their art here. Oh, and yeah, stuff. yeah, but, uh, oh, yeah, that was a tough one. Yeah, I'm about to say, you know, was it, you know, I, I know for you, there's probably done a hundred festivals, and, you know, do those ones all sort of stick out in your head and go, Jesus Christ, that was difficult? 
Well, that, when you have the sun like that, yeah, that is the that's the worst. I think mm. I, I'm not sensitive to heat. Yeah, I mean we done insanely warm mm. festivals sometimes, but at least at least you don't have the sun, direct yeah. sunlight. That that is what I hate the most. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Now that was that was horrible. You know, there there, there are many of us. You know, who are quite bloodstock. So to you know, veteran said that was really wasn't a particularly pleasant festival. Yeah. Uh, well, they should have put the stage maybe on the other side. Oh, so yeah, so you didn't uh, the sun away from the sun, yeah. But then again, you're barbecuing the audience, but you would do it anyway, so. Right. Mm. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to let you go in a minute and, and do, put the makeup on the stuff right. and get all the stuff there. But, you know, sort of, last one before you go, sort of, you know, you mentioned about the States and stuff. What, what after, how, how long do you reckon you're on the road with, with the album? You know, is this, you know, is it just as long as people want to come and see you? Well, I think we're going to do most parts of the world at least. Yeah. Uh, at least once, you know? Yeah. Uh, no, but we are actually in a position where we have some ideas for future music as well. Uh, so, so it may not be six years to the next album. No, then. no, it may not. <laughs> well, on that bombshell, I'm going to let you go. Andreas, thank you. Thank you so much for talking nice to us. Really, really, really good. You too, mate. And I will, I will be sort of, in fact, I'm, I'm up on the balcony, but I will be looking for the balcony, sort of sitting, singing really along. So I hope you enjoy the show. Man. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm psyched for it, absolutely psyched for it. Thank no you very much. No really good. Cheers. Cheers.